Hi, I'm Tim Robel and welcome to another episode of Adventure Athlete. Today I'm going to talk about designing yourself. Um, something that's hard for us to do and to define what, what our core really is because a lot of us don't really know what our core is. For myself, it started, um, those of you that have been following the channel, you know that I did 22 years in the Air Force. I started off as an aircraft uh, inspector and um, had enough um, talent, I'll say, that uh, drew the attention of the machine shop um, supervisor and he wanted me to come work over there. So I did a, uh, a transfer to my last uh, about six years. I became a machinist welder. And I thank you, Tom, for, uh, for taking me in and uh, mentoring me on that type of thing. But uh, getting back to uh, defining yourself, I retired after 22 years and had my own shop going probably the previous 10 Tim Robel Concepts. And uh, I was building off-road cars and bumpers and roll cages and racks, uh, ground up buggies. Uh, 2003, I built my first big car, LS powered uh, on 49 inch IROX. It was a four seater. It had coilovers and bypasses and hydraulic bump stops on each corner. And it was kind of state of the, uh, state of the art for its time. Um, and probably even today, it's still somewhat state of the art. It's not independent suspension and that's what I would do now if I were to build. But getting back to the original program, had the shop running after retirement. About 18 months or so after uh, I retired, uh, we had a huge shop, uh, I guess we'll call it burglary. Uh, 21 December, I think that was 2008 or 9, um, 14 guys came in uh, with a semi and liquidated the shop. And uh, that kind of left me devastated and unsure on what path to go. But it also let me sit down and define like what I'm gonna do with life. Now, uh, I lost a lot of uh, inventory. I lost 14 motorcycles and quads, uh, three off-road cars, uh, most of my retail, um, and some of my light hand tools. I was surprised they didn't take things like uh, welders and um, of course, you know, like a lathe is a little bit more uh, uh, taxing to, to steal because it weighs so much or a mill. But uh, they left all my heavy equipment and uh, I tried to stay in business and just couldn't uh, quite swing it with the economy. So I brought everything home. So um, at that point in time, I started getting stuff back. They started catching the, uh, the bad guys and uh, the, the police did a great job of... Uh, Recovering about maybe a quarter of my property, like I got the motor and trans and transfer case back from a car and a shock package back from a car. Um, I got my little off-road buggy back and uh, 14 motorcycles and quads started dwindling in. I think I ended up with about 11 back and some of those were clients. But uh, I had all that stuff stacked over here and in the shed. I mean, it was just packed. And... Um, I started defining what I wanted out of life and I thought, you know what, um, I'm keeping stable in business right now. So let's start defining what your core package is. I said, okay, I have a, a trials bike, a two stroke uh, that I use for enduro cross and extreme enduro. And uh, of course I have a 570 as my training bike, KTM. And then I have um, a 950 that I can use for my adventure stuff. So I sold everything else and started liquidating things. And one of the things that I ended up with, uh, with some of that cash flow, as well as paying off some of my uh, debt that I had incurred, was I bought this Torchmate. And that really did change the way that I um, fabricated and built parts. Uh, this is a CNC plasma, for those of you who don't know. Um, so what you do is you, uh, what I do is I usually make a template uh, on something and then I scan it in and I build my part off of that, export it, and then it uses air over arc to cut out that tab multiple times. You can put, you know, as many as you want on the, uh, on the sheet and, you know, maybe you need eight of them and then two weeks later you need eight more. You come back, that's all on the computer for you. It just cuts out again and, you know, about nine minutes you have more parts. Um, so that changed some of the things, but it also changed my thinking. Um, and gets back to designing or defining yourself and what you're actually, what you want and what you actually need. Uh, so I had these four motorcycles that I was still using on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And um, I said, can I, can I pare down more? Um, so that's what I did. And I built this uh, 450 XCF. And that's what I call my one bike concept. 
And why I'm kind of telling you all of this is because you might not even be into motorcycles, but you might have more things that you need laying around. And you also have uh, debt that is, is sitting around. Um, for me, I built this one bike. I, I compete in the uh, Southern California Trials on this motorcycle. Um, I still uh, train uh, off-road, dual sport. Love to do the Big Bear Ride. And I'll do that next year. Um, I do the Extreme Enduros. Um, I skipped a lot of that stuff this year just trying to get stuff in place. But uh, now I have... Um, I have time and I've defined and I've kind of pared everything down to one of everything. So this is my one bike concept that I use for adventure, uh, trials, enduro cross, uh, extreme enduro, and just going out and getting some training sessions on. With that, um, you can see up on the shelf as I walk in towards the shop that um, it requires a different tank. So, uh, you know, if you're going to do some uh, dual sport and some... Uh, adventure touring. Uh, I have the uh, Acherby's tank. I think that's a 3.1 for the bike. And um, I have the fuel pump and everything installed in it. So it's just a simple transition over from that tank to the other tank, pour fuel, and you're ready to go. Uh, I have another set of tires ready for it to go. Um, depending on what I'm doing is what I use on the bike. For the most part, I like the uh, the golden fatty up front. Uh, or the Kenda, um, I believe that's not that's not a Kenda, that's a uh, Shinko, uh, their Shinko Fatty, which I've been super happy with. And then the Kenda Ibex in the back, um, or Equilibrium, once again, depending on what I'm doing. I have my tires for my Can-Am off-road car. I do switch tires from, uh, they're both uh, 35s, the sets, but I go from the Tensors to the uh, Mud Terrains. So when you're designing one product to do everything, you have to kind of have maybe a few extra little parts. And to do that, um, what I've done is I've really assessed my situation and I looked around and said, what can I pare down on? I have too much stuff. And with that stuff, um, I'm going to say that each one of you that I'm talking to, depending on where you are in life, probably has anywhere from three to $15,000 and even more just sitting around in the garage and stuff that you will not use this year at all. Uh, things to think about. You got to be really real with yourself and say, hey, am I really going to build this project? There was one point in time in the garage that I had like eight sets of tires for different builds and I had shock packages and different things and I started looking. I'm like, good grief. I might have 30 grand worth of stuff sitting here that I can, I can sell, liquidate, use that money somewhere else, like buy a new motorcycle and build one that meets my standards. Like right now, um, with this Adventure Athlete Series, for myself, I'm real big on using what I have. Now, I've built my life around the definitions. Um, a lot of times on Sundays, which this is a Sunday right now, I define um, my life and I think, where do I wanna head? I look back on my last week and last year and say, hey, where can I do this better and be the best me I can be and uh, try to get set up? So for me right now, I have my, uh, I'll call it my kit. I have my adventure truck that I built and designed and made that exactly what I wanted for camping. And that's just something that reinforces exactly what I want uh, out of life, which is a defined kit. Uh, with a mountain bike, with a motorcycle, with a one wheel electric skateboard, um, with a kayak, uh, of course having good running shoes uh, that I can run and hike and do that type of thing in. Um, these things are real important for me to have and then some of you may have been following this series, uh, know that I've put uh, scuba and uh, getting my paragliding license on the, uh, the list. Um, that may get pushed back a little bit because right now I'm taking time to uh, get stuff paid off and down and um, I'm having to spend a little bit more time with my dad so I'm getting geared up to go out there every other week now because he's needing the, uh, the help and I welcome to go out and help him. Um, I think that'll be a good time for both of us but to do that I have to pare down and I have to be a little bit more uh, liquid on my uh, cash flow because I'm not able to work as much. I'm drawing down Tim Robo Concepts a little bit. Um, I will be probably, I want to say, hiring um, somebody in the next uh, couple of months to come out and um, 
be a helper and then hopefully I can take that person and raise them to another level and uh, they'll be able to work uh, a little bit on their own with just some general guidance versus uh, being looked over the shoulder all the time. But uh, through defining your life and where you want to go and what you have, go out, in the, go out in your garage and look around. Do you have a bunch of stuff sitting out there that you haven't used in a year or two? And does it have value to it? You know, vehicles that you haven't used has value. Uh, anything tool related that you, uh, maybe you bought something for a process and you don't really, um, you don't really use it anymore. For myself, um, I'm always nervous to sell a tool. And as we look around, I'm surrounded by stuff that um, helps me create. And I'm defined by being able to create. And I've set up you know, cer uh, certain sections for that because I am defined in my actions. I do do sheet metal. Um, I do uh, well MIG and TIG still. Um, I do burn parts. I do... Um, CNC machining. Um, I haven't been using this Tormach as much as I like, and that's on my plan for, I already own it, uh, own it outright. So why am I not producing parts? Um, I need to get back to that. I did a couple of small runs and got some parts out and I have, uh, it takes two parts to make a discard. It takes the holder and it takes the, um, the guard itself so I have 10 of these ready to go I need to um, I need to run another run of parts and um, weld those together and get those out and make a little bit more money uh, we'll call it remotely or easy um, run the part you know I can uh, be drinking coffee as my parts running and just loading parts it makes for a, a nice fun rewarding day not as fun as being on the bicycle so um, you know defining my kit and where I want to go I need to get some of my fabrication stuff out and done and start uh, getting to a point where I'm utilizing my machine more. So where, where I'm going with all of this is um, I'm not trying to just tell you my story. What I'm trying to do is inspire you on a story and you look and define your life and think, oh man, I, I have that car that's been sitting in the garage for you know 22 years and I haven't done anything with it now. Am I going to do anything with it tomorrow? Am I going to do anything with it next week? Am I going to do anything with it next year? If your answer is no to some or all of those, maybe it might be time to uh, put put a nice Craigslist ad in or wherever you choose to sell something. I've had great look, uh, luck on uh, Craigslist. Get rid of that. Look at something that you've had and, and say, you know what? Um, I don't need that anymore. You know, as I'm walking around, I'm looking, you know, for stuff. I have this motorcycle rack that, uh, I, mod I bought and then modified for the back of my overland rig that carries a motorcycle on. I fabricated the hoop, which makes the bike stay in there a lot better and um, kind of set up the tie down system and then welded it, stitch welded it all in. So I'm looking at that and I go, well, for sure that's got, that's got to be something uh, that's got to go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and liquidate that and, you know, maybe I'll get 200 bucks for it. Um, and there's some other things like rack, racks for the top of my canyon that I have, the Thule racks uh, that I carry the solar panels on. You know, another 150 bucks there. Little things here and there all add up. Next thing you know, those $200, $500 ends up being a grand. And the things that are sitting around, maybe you got that old car, maybe that car's worth 15, 20 grand just as it sits. Instead of trying to fix it up or whatever, maybe you liquidate that and start uh, living your life a little bit... Um, more fun or action oriented. Um, not everyone's like me and wants to be an adventure athlete. Um, I came up with that because I know I'm living when I'm out camping, when I'm out jumping on rocks, when I'm on the mountain bike and uh, doing a flowy single track and just really enjoying life. When I'm out on the motorcycle, um, I consider actually kayaking more of a relaxing, although it, uh, it is a workout, but it, for me it's more of a relaxing, um, training session than anything else. Um, you know, I know I like to keep my training sessions somewhere around two to three hours out. I'm more of an endurance type athlete, which I'll call that kind of like the small end of being an endurance athlete. When you look at an ultra runner that's out running for 20 or 25 hours straight, um, that's, that's pretty nuts and something that I actually probably will never be. Um, I like that quick high of getting out and on the bicycle or the skateboard. Um, 
or going for a run and uh, getting back and just enjoying the day. But uh, what I'm getting at is define your life, right? Take a clean sheet of paper and without anybody looking, or right? it's none of it's no none of anybody else's business on what you want to do. And a lot of times we're worried about uh, what our spouse is going to think, or what our um, our parents are going to think about about our actions. But really, what it, what it comes down to is we all have one life to live, and that's yours. Now you want to do the best you can be to be a good husband or a good wife. Um, and defining some of this stuff, but uh, in the end, it's your life. So um, write that list like a little kid uh, asking for some stuff for Christmas. You know, I want two pools and I want a water slide. But then take that list and really define some of the things out there. Like, am I going to use this item that I'm desiring? Uh, am I going to use this item um, once a day, once a week, once a month, once a year? And then uh, you'll have to put weight on that, whether you think uh, that's something that would be a good thing to uh, invest in or not. For myself, I uh, bought the, the Can-Am. That Can-Am has brought more joy and life to me than uh, probably any other toy that I've owned. Um, because I'm able to make my um, design changes and um, I'm able to... Uh, take what's in my head and you know I cut off the front of the car I cut off the top of the car I cut off the back of the car created an exhaust um, being able to do that type of thing um, really gives me passion and joy in life I love to create that's what what's keeping me from really being um, I'll say a nomad and just being out living adventures every day is I love the shop um, I love my little animals um, this little guy right here follows me around all day. It's our little palm. And uh, I got another Mastiff that follows me around. They're out here. But um, those are the things that keep me from being full-time on the road um, living. Not to mention the commitment uh, with going and spending time with my dad. Um, I enjoy our house. I've built, I've designed all of this around here to be an environment that is creative and um, you know it's set up in little cells um, I got a top on my forge here but I got a, a forge with a uh, electric um, blower motor in it so I can forge and I have all my blacksmith stuff uh, anvil that was on my list of things to uh, to get uh, about three years ago and then uh, my wood shop although it's not a huge wood shop it's not the state-of-the-art stuff um, but everything I have there is really, really functional, and it means a lot to me. So as I'm defining my life, I'm walking around trying to figure out, like, what can I keep and what can I get rid of and never miss again. Um, I'm about pared down to what my core is going to be. Uh, for me, tools make me money. And uh, although I could get money for the tools, it's not as much as I would get over the next year using the tools to uh, make me money. So sometimes it takes a little money to make money. If you have the tools, it's probably best not to liquidate those. But if you're not using them, um, look around, you know. Um, if, if being honest, like if you're not going to use it, get rid of it. Maybe this week, next week, next month, next year. If you don't even make it into the year category, for me, that's a that's a must go. And um, I start looking at the things that I use maybe once a month, and I go, well, okay, let's let's figure out: do I need this? Do I want this? Um, is this something that uh, keeps me alive? Something that keeps me driven? And if my answer is no to that, then uh, let's liquidate it and move on. So anyway, hopefully my uh, my words have kind of stayed. In context once again I pick up my uh, camera and I just start talking I think about what I want to talk about a little bit but I try to leave what I bring to you kind of raw um, kind of uh, it's an unpolished version of a video but it's it's what it's done is is real and it's it's uh, asking you to think and define your life and to put parameters on do I use this um, do I want this do I desire this there's a lot of stuff on my list that I had um, that I wanted and then coming and defining myself I'm like yeah okay I don't even need that I wouldn't even miss that I actually have a lot of things right now that I do and don't have enough time 
to do those things. So I don't need to add something more to the equation. And that's kind of where the uh, paragliding and the scuba came in. It's like, okay, I have enough things to hold me over. If I never do that for the rest of my life, um, I think both are really, really cool. But I'm, I'm going to be okay uh, with just going out and living a very fun, adventurous life with, with you know, hiking, backpacking, trail running, uh, the one wheel, the mountain bike, the motorcycle, the side by side, and then going to uh, new unique places to go do those type of things. Um, I think I got a full schedule, so I'm uh, on my content list. I have to say that I am uh, about 99.9% .9 content in life. Um, now it's time to go live that life because I've defined what I wanted. And it's been a long road. It's been probably 10 years to get to this point uh, from when I started defining myself. I think uh, we're right about 10 years from when the shop got robbed. And that was a new start. Uh, I was at my lowest of lows because everything I created was gone. And, uh, you know, you think about, well, shit, what am I going to do now? Um, so you go back to what you know. You try to get a job. And... Um, you know, I put in a lot of applications and I didn't have a whole lot of uh, outreach for, uh, you know, older older guys. So uh, I went back to what I knew. I went back to the uh, the shop and started making stuff and uh, that's paid off really well. And there's no better satisfaction than to work for yourself. Although it's probably one of the tougher roads you can do. Um, it's very rewarding and it allows you uh, an outlet for your creative side and design side. So anyway, that's going to be it for now. Uh, I know I've been long-winded once again, but uh, hopefully I've got this point across and didn't beat it into you too much. But we're always thinking about uh, retirement, but we also have to think about living today. And I'm getting ready to jump on my mountain bike. Today's going to be 98 degrees, and I'm getting ready to go for a ride, but I look at that as training for my heat index. So that's going to be it for now. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of your views and putting up with watching my videos. Uh, that's going to be it for now. Thank you guys. I'm Tim Rubble, and I'll catch you here next time.